Miami's hot, 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 hot fire. Miami's hot, 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 hot fire. Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel and the Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another um, recap. And this is for the Real Housewives of Miami. And this is season six, episode 18. And this is actually reunion part one, uncensored. So I should have mentioned this before I put this out here. But for the reunions, I actually, they're going to be a day late because I'm going to be reviewing the Peacock version because that's the uncensored version. And a lot of times with the Peacock version, there's some extended, ste extended scenes that you won't see in the Bravo version of the show. But with that being said, let's get into it. You already know, this is one of my favorite fran- This is actually my favorite franchise right now. It is, hands down. You could probably tell with how I review them. I enjoy watching this show. And I watched this reunion twice. <laughs> That's how entertained I am by this franchise. I'm not gonna hold you. I'll probably go back um, on days where I'm just being lazy and rewatch the whole season. And I'll rewatch, and I do rewatch the previous seasons too, especially since the reboot. Like, it's just been, it's been good to me. It's been so good. <laughs> so good. So, so, so good. So, um, this one was not, didn't seem extended. And um, I will say this, it started off pretty good, this reunion. And it is definitely a three-part reunion. And I can tell they're going to need all three parts because they really didn't get to all the ladies that much in this. And... You don't know this until you, you know, watch this reunion. They have a lot of ladies on this show. And one thing that's different about this show versus the other um, Real Housewives shows is that the friend ofs get the same treatment as like the main cast people. So they're on, they've been on this reunion the whole entire time, like the friend ofs. And for this season, especially, it makes all the sense in the world because everyone brought it. Everyone brought it. <laughs> like everyone had their own backstory. Everyone had something going on. Um, some or they were in the mix of some BS. Like everyone has something going on with this show. Friend of like main cast members, it didn't matter. So I will say rightfully so, the friend of should be on the stage the whole time. Like, and this is the first time I've ever seen that too. Even with Miami. Because Miami's friend ups have always been treated differently. Because, you know, historically the friend ups since reboot. Um, with Kiki coming in, I think it's season five. Because I don't I don't remember her being there season four. Um, all the friend ups are OGs. They actually were originally part of the, they were the main housewives during the original um, iteration of the show. So, Yeah. Anyway, so with that being said, let's get into it. So we see the reunion, we see the ladies arriving at the reunion and they're doing the reunion at New York and uh, Marisol and Alexi are sharing a dressing room, but also Birdie and Kiki are sharing a dressing room. So we have like our Cuban, our our Cuban ladies sharing the dressing room and then the Haitian ladies sharing the dressing room. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Ba, 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 ba. I'm loving it. Like, it's so good. Um, and the reunion theme is Mexico. And if you want me to go more into detail about the theme and what they're wearing, definitely check out my reunion looks video that I have out there. Um, after watching this, of course, watch this full recap and then go back and watch uh, my Real Housewives reunion looks review. Um, I have one for both Beverly Hills and um, Miami, but for this one, you definitely want to tune into the Miami one because I give you what the looks look like. I give you my thoughts on it and then we key, key a little bit about it. Definitely check it out. Anyway. Let's get into the actual reunion now. So with the Real Housewives of uh, Miami, they do start it differently. They always start with a shot of tequila prior to the reunion. Um, Maya's Nicole this time. She has a shot of water because, you know, she brought her friend with her, uh, her daughter, um, because she's expecting still during this reunion. And I think, actually, she's, and we find out when she's due at the very beginning, too, when um, Andy does all the pleasant, pleasantries. Um... So, 
basically during the pleasantries, because I'll just get into that right now before we actually get into the meat and potatoes reunion. Um, we find out that Dr. Nicole is due um, April 27th. So her child's going to be a Taurus baby. And it was kind of funny because then um, Alexia is like, I'm a Taurus. And it's like, I'm getting it back. I'm getting my revenge. You're getting your revenge. <laughs> because as you know, um, uh, Alexia and Dr. Nicole's relationship is, is turbulent. It's not horrible. Um, it's definitely one. To me, it's a one-sided beef. Um, if Alexia could just get out of her own way of this this relationship, I think they actually would be really, really cool because they have so much in common. But Alexia, I don't know. Um, you know, Adriana did share and mention it best that she thinks that Alexia is jealous of Dr. Nicole, and I kind of agree with that. Um, even though Adriana, let's be real, She'd be on some BS. And child, on this reunion, she was on the BS the whole entire time to the point where I was just like, oh my gosh, Adriana, you are doing too much. But we'll get to that shortly. It actually, this reunion actually starts with the Larsa segment. So a lot, a lot of Larsa. And Larsa is, an, um, sit, is sitting next to Andy. Um, also, Gertie is sitting next to Andy on the other side. And the, I never did go about the seating arrangements much, so let's go into that real quick. And then Lisa is sitting next to Larsa, and then Dr. Nicole is sitting next to Lisa, and then we have um, Adriana um, being last over there because, you know, she's a friend of. Um, and then on the other side, we have Gertie, and then next to Gertie is Alexia, and I'm loving it. I won't spoil it, but I'm going to kind of spoil it a little bit. Them two, they're coming in hot and united. The two, the two with the strongest personalities going, oh man. <laughs> That's why I was like, okay, I have to watch this reunion. And I actually watched this before I watched the Beverly Hills reunion. Because I was like, oh no, I got to see this. <laughs> this looks like must-see TV. Um, okay, but then um, um, Alexia so sitting next to Alexia is Julia. Julia sitting next to Kiki. Kiki sitting next to Marisol. So that's how that's going there. Uh, anyway, so and everyone looks beautiful, and we're going to go into that. So it starts with Larsa, and we see that Larsa and Marcus, um, they're talking, they they kind of show the footage of Larsa with um, the prompt getting the promise ring from Marcus. Now let me ask you this. Do you think Marcus really brought that? Promise ring. I kind of went to a little bit in the season finale, but not really because I skipped Larsa's segments because I don't really like Larsa. <laughs> but, um, and also I don't believe her storyline ever, um, especially with the Marcus situation. And let's get, let's just get the cat out of the bag with this. Marcus definitely looks like a clout chaser on this reunion. He looks like a clout chaser. Um, the only other um, person who's there who has a partner is Jody, but Jody's staying out of the way. And I don't think we've even seen Jody much on this reunion yet. But Marcus is all up in the mix at this reunion, this first part, and it is kind of annoying. It's like you're get, he's giving Peter energy. I'm just saying it. He has a lot of side comments to say about the ladies as they're kind of, you know, checking Larsa. And it's just like, you're, sir, sir, you should not be matching a lady's energy. It's weird. So, I mean, that's kind of been what's happened. So that's kind of what happened almost the whole entire time during Larsa's segment as Larsa is just in this endlessly trying to defend this relationship that they have. And um, also, we do find out that Larsa put her condo, her Miami condo, for sale, which she kind of mentioned it a little bit during the season that that was probably going to happen because, um, and it wasn't really, I hate how she spins things because I feel like she, she don't even realize she'd be getting caught in her own lies. When she mentioned it a little bit during the season, it was more or less because she was getting sick of going back and forth. Because 
outside of this show, I think she mainly lives in L.A. I don't think she really lives in Miami like that. I think she really is just in Miami for the show, and then she goes back to L.A. Because, you know, her and Scotty have and had multiple homes, like, throughout the country. So I'm kind of just looking at her like, what is this? So, um... Anyway, so they go into that and they start talking about the sex lives of it all. Because remember how last season she mentioned that um, she um, has sex, had sex with Scotty like three times a night. And now she's saying five times a night. But now she's saying she doesn't want to talk about her sex life anymore. And um, Alexi is like, well, that's kind of awkward. Why did you want to say that out loud anyway? And um, basically... Um, that leads to Gertie and Alexi getting into with Larsa about her lying all the time because she'd be lying. And Lisa's like the only one that's defending Larsa as usual. And Gertie's literally calling Lisa a mascot. She's like, okay, per the mascot, look at Lisa's mask. I mean, look at Larsa's mascot. And no one believes this whole thing about her sex life thing. I mean, no one. She said it because it was salacious. We know that's why she said it. And... Yeah. Lisa's trying to defend it, but she don't realize she sounds dumb because she always sounds dumb when she talks. But that's pretty much where this segment ends. Back to the recap. And I am multitasking right now, just in case you weren't were wondering what was happening. But anyway. So then from there, they're talking about the five day party that Larsa um, threw for um, Marcus. Okay, so the five-day party was, Marcus was gone for five days. And apparently, Larsa gets separation anxiety, which is also the name of their podcast, whenever he's not around. And so, I'm not going to lie, I feel like she is even doing that as a plug to plug her product, which is one of the main beefs that, Alexi and some of the ladies have with her is like everything about business and plugging a product is never about really her personal life ever. She's not really sharing her personal life, um, which I hope they get to that in like part two or three of this reunion. But um, um, yeah, so that is the purpose of that. So um, <clears throat> anyway, so she fell away because the ladies found that this party was dumb because it was. And she states that she was actually most hurt by Kiki because Kiki kind of made fun of her confessional. And this starts the whole entire conversation in reference to <clears throat> Kiki and Larsa's friendship. And Gertie chimes in briefly and tells her, and you can tell that she has something that she has some tea on Larsa behind the scenes tea. On how she handles things when it comes to show and on TV. And now I'm starting to really understand why Gertie kept calling Larsa fake. Because what she wasn't sharing. She was actually trying to like spare Larsa with this. Is that Larsa does some things behind the scenes. And presents a different way on television. And so... Yeah, that was a little bit of a breadcrumb that um, Gertie said there. But, like, you could tell towards the end of this, Gertie was on a mission. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah, this is exposed season. I I'm not playing with her. Uh, but anyway, so she was like, I'm going to let it go. We'll talk about it later. But, yeah. And so um, Kiki and Larsa end up talking it out. And they do apologize to each other. Uh, now with Larsa, I never believe her apologies because I feel like her apologies literally only come during the reunion. They don't come any other time. And even when Larsa was trying to like kind of come at her about how she was like being shady towards her in confessionals and like Kiki's like, you literally did the same thing to me. Like you said, I need to get a man in order to even hang out with you. And she did. She literally said that. And then she also said something that we didn't see, but it was behind the scenes stuff. Like the reason why she needs all those, you know, dildos is because she can't keep a man. 
And it's just kind of like, girl. And that's the problem that I have with Larson. I've always had with Larson. She likes to play the victim and villain at the same time. Like, pick a side and stay there. And that's always been my issue with her. But I wish this was the last part of the Larson segment. But we know it's not. <laughs> so, the, okay. Next with the Larson segment, they talk about the Michael Jordan of it all. And his words of how he doesn't really approve of this relationship. And Larson basically this whole entire time continues to deflect. And Alexia, along with Andy, states, um, because Lars is like saying, we just keep talking about this. Like, we've talked about this so much. Um, she's just being so dramatic about it. And then both Andy and um, Alexia is like, no, we really didn't talk about it until like towards the end of the season. We really didn't talk about it enough. We should have been talking about it from jump. And Andy's like, this is all I really wanted to know about the whole entire time. <laughs> like I didn't care about anything else you had going on. Like he didn't say it like that, but he might as well wouldn't said it because that's what he was thinking. And along with the rest of us, because it's weird. And then even Julia tries to shed some light. She's like, it is awkward. That's like I leave Martina and then I end up dating Chris Everest's daughter. Um, because Martina and Chris Everest they're rivals, they're tennis rivals. And then in the com and then you see a little block of Marcus saying it's not even the same thing. It's like okay, maybe you don't think it's the same thing because you have nothing going on, but it's the same. It's a very similar comparison. Actually, the analogy makes all the sense in the world. But okay, sir, I'm sorry, but like this, if Marcus thought that this show was going to help him, it makes him so irritating and. I've never thought I would say this, but like, I understand why Michael Jordan cut you off now. Financially. I get it now. Because you come off like a spoiled Nepo baby. It's so bad. Because even when he said at the beginning, like, oh, these legs couldn't even breathe the same air as my dad. It's like, ill. Like, Okay, I'm normally not against this, but just imagine if this was if he was a white man saying that. You wouldn't like him saying so. I mean, I'm putting the same energy. I don't like that kind of like smuggish, better than talk. When, sir, what have you done other than waste your dad's money and to the point where he cuts you off? And the multiple financial issues you've had. Just in case y'all forgot, I live in I live in Chicago, so I, I know I know some of the tea when it comes to all that, because that's kind of a known thing. Like it's and it's not even a Chicago thing. I feel like a lot of people know about that. Know know about um, you know his shortcomings of trying basically trying to follow the footsteps of his dad and like failing. Not doing a great job of it. And now you're on this reality show. I'm sorry, but Michael Jordan would never. <laughs> he would never. He would never. Like, sir. And you're all in the women's business. Uh, anyway. Um... So they talk about they so they end the segment talking about possible wedding plans and then he and then um you know Andy's asking like will the all the ladies be you know invited if you do have a wedding and then she pretty much shades them all and then it goes on commercial break and during the commercial break they're still just all sitting there you know just getting themselves together like the Sorry, I have something in my eye. Um, okay. Um, they're getting themselves together. And um, Gertie the whole entire time is going off. <laughs> and she's like, can't wait to like spill the tea about how Larsa threatens the ladies. And she's going off to um, Alexi about it. And um, she's basically saying that, you know, Larsa is a poison to the group. And the whole entire time, Larsa on the other side is looking completely unbothered. 
and just has this ridiculous camera with like, she has this cam, well, she has her phone with this ridiculous flash search for her to do selfies and just looking just like ridiculous. It, <laughs> so that's where um, it, that segment in it. And then now we go a little bit into Marisol and what's going on with that. Okay. So next we're with Marisol and Julia and they're talking about the brief view that they had because Julia called Marisol out with as being the pot stirrer. And Adriana chimes in. <laughs> and this is the start of the BS with Adriana. Adriana, this whole entire first part of this reunion was doing too much. And it was annoying. It was so annoying. And no one was amused. Everyone was just kind of looking at her like, girl. <laughs> so she calls Marisol a cyber bully. And um, she has these printed DMs that she gives to Andy. Um, about random people saying that Marisol did this, that, and this, and, uh, and I don't know if it's random people or if it was really like Adriana's burner accounts saying it back to her. And like, so Andy's looking at these receipts. He's like, what is this? And by the way, that was the first time she had a prop. It won't be the last time she has a prop. It's just like, girl, let it go. Like. I know you're sitting way at the end, but maybe it's for a reason. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But anyway, so um, then Adriana then tries to say that uh, Marisol wished her dead. And they show the, they show the beating footage and it was clearly a joke. Like no one took it seriously. And um, Marisol, um, she basically does kind of own that she is a little bit of a pot stirrer, but she says everyone, everyone else does it too. <laughs> like, she's like, I'm not the only one. Like we all do it. And, um, Julia chimes in states, well, that might be true. But like, the thing is, I'm a truth stirrer over here. You're actually a pot stirrer. I, you know, expose the truth. And <laughs> Marisol's like your version of the truth. She's like, yeah, because I'm speaking from the heart. I was like, <laughs> I love how she <laughs> redid that. But then um, Julia has evidence of, she basically shares her evidence of Marisol's issues, of, of Marisol posturing with the issues that she has with Dr. Nicole, along with the rumors about her, Julia being with a man coming from Marisol, and then um, Larsa states like, no, that didn't come from Marisol. Like that came from someone else who was around at the party that you were at. But, and then, you know, Julia's like, well, I mean, you're so connected in Miami. You're heavily connected in Miami. It just doesn't seem far fetched that you would hire a private investigator to investigate us all. And Marisol basically, of course, like says, no, I wouldn't do that. That doesn't make any sense. Like if I was to do that, I could have been there that and had all the tea on all y'all, but I don't do all that. And, um, Adrienne then chimes in and said it wasn't a private investigator. It's her cousin instead. And, this starts a whole like back and forth with because the whole entire time <clears throat> while Marisol is trying to talk, Adriana can't help herself. She just chimes in constantly, chimes in constantly. And it's just it's really annoying. And um, but this does lead to um, the private investigator part, because then they all ask, like, who all believe that she could do this? And half of them raise their hand. And then this is where Dr. Nicole chimed in and said, well, I mean. Yeah, although Julia was singing like a canary this whole entire season, um, the difference was it was based off of what really happened. Like, it was there. <laughs> and then she just would repeat it. What you were doing is you just would stand on things that you heard in the streets that may or may not be true and speak about like it's gospel and that's dangerous. And... Um, then Alexia chimed in. She's like, well, I mean, instead of you doing that, you brought someone else in to do that. I'm um, talking about the whole Anna situation. And um, Andy puts a pen in. He's like, we're not going to get into that yet. And so that's where that ends. Next, we have Alexia and the New Horizon segment. Um, we talk about the party. 
Um, we talk about, um, so the recap in that party, recapping Todd not being at the party and why Todd was not at the party. Um, Todd and Alexia's potential um, financial issues. Um, Peter and mainly Frankie, because that's the part we care the most about. And that's really what makes Alexia likable. Um, it, that is her saving grace, like for real, for real. But like, I do like Alexia outside of like the Frankie of it all, because I do like how she could just like go, go out. when she goes bro, it kind of cracks me up, especially when it's right. Like she goes bro when she's not right. And I don't like that. But when she is right and she's getting you together, it's great. But anyway, so we do find out that Frankie now is becoming more independent than ever. He takes Uber all the time. Sometimes he doesn't even call um, Alexia at all. Like he forgets to call her like because he's off doing his own thing. And so we love that for him. And then we also find out that um, Peter did, um, she did set it up for Peter to be a standby guardian if something was to happen to her. So that is set up um, because that was really a nice conversation to see that they did have that conversation with her doing estate planning because that is necessary. Um, and then they talk about Todd and the party and why he wasn't there. Adriana chimes in yet again and states, well, that's part of the job. You know, everyone needs to be there. That's part of the job. And um, Alexia claps back and states, well, being a bitch is not part of the job, so you should stop that. <laughs> and she said it just as a matter of fact. I was like, ooh. And everyone was just like, oh. oh. Everyone. And then this leads to Adriana and Alexia going back and forth. But then they stop a little bit. And then this is where Dr. Nicole states to Alexia, like, you know, I feel like there's a double standard with you. Like you do things, but you you're okay with when you do things, but when others do it back, you don't like that. And so they mentioned the finance thing of it all. You literally were talking about Lisa's finances, but then you have a problem with everyone else is talking about yours. And she's like, no, it's not about my finances, it's about my family. I have a problem with people talking about my family. And she's like, well, you've done the same thing to me. Like you talked about my relationship with my mom, my relationship with my dad. That's a double standard, right? And Dr. Nicole's correct. Um, and that's one thing, pause, that I love about this franchise. Outside of um, Larsa, for me, at least, everyone has points. Everyone has valid points. No one's completely right in this show. No one's completely wrong in this show. So it makes everyone very complex and likable and also unlikable at the same time, but not really unlikable. Just it's more or less a lot of times there's some certain behaviors you don't like, but it doesn't take away from you not liking them necessarily. Uh, Larsa, though, her role is different, though. Like, I'm pretty sure her role on the show is she is supposed to be the villain. She's not supposed to be likable, um, even though she has her moments where she is. Uh, my problem with Larsa is she needs to stand in that villain role. Like, and she doesn't do that enough. She likes to be a vic victim, too. And you can't have it both ways. Um, if she was to lean all the way into the villain side of, of, the, of what she does, I probably wouldn't have as much of a problem with her, actually. But anyway. So, um, Alexia and Todd's finances come in, and Alexia is just trying to plead her case that she really doesn't have the financial problems everyone's saying that she has. And while she's just rambling on and on and on, because she kind of was rambling on and on and on, um, Lisa, both Lisa and Dr. Nicole both have to pee super badly. So they just literally make a run for it because they had to go. And, um, <laughs> and this is all while she's talking and Alexi calls them <laughs> rude bitches, but she's like, I'm going to wait till they come back though. I'm going to wait till they come back. But I don't even think they got back to it because like she wasn't really, no one cared. Like the only person that was giving her crap about her finances was Adriana and no one takes Adriana seriously on this show <laughs> okay so the next segment Adriana has a poem to that she reads after the break um because they do take a break clearly because it was it was it was time for break <laughs> um and the poem is all about being a star and the definition of being a star and it's just like so this is her second prop and what I don't like about Adriana is she's so thirsty. 
it's like, girl, sit back. Your turn will come. You had story this season. You had things that went on with you this season. Wait your turn. Like, at least only chime in when your name's being mentioned. Why do you always chime in? <laughs> it's so irritating. And she has all these props. And it's just like, why do you always have a prop? From the flag on the first episode of this, um, of the, um, not the reunion, but of the season to like the poem to a letter from, uh, from Marisol's liver. It's just like, girl, it's team too much. But anyway, both Marisol and Alexia are over it and it's so awkward. Larsa calls Alexia out on how she says things, which I do agree because when Marisol gets into her bro mode, she kind of just, everyone can get it. It's a case that everyone can get it. And so what she said was, I'm the only one that tells the truth on this stage. And it's just like, almost everyone. She did try to clean it up and then she went back to it like, no, I'm the only one that tells the truth. Everyone else on the stage lies. And like, oh, <laughs> Larsa's like, I don't like that. Why do you do that? Like, why do you always, you, you speak like you're better than people, which she does. She definitely does. So what I wrote down was right message. The problem is it can't be coming from Larsa though, because <laughs> it's the wrong messenger, such the wrong messenger. And so now Larsa and Alexia are going back and forth. Um, Alexia exposes how she handled Gertie. Um, and then Andy puts a pin in and he's like, we, we'll get into that later. And one thing that I mentioned, I think I mentioned the very beginning of this is that you, it's very clear that Alexia and Gertie are on the same page for this reunion. So if I was Larsa, I would be worried. Because Lisa's not strong enough to go back and forth. Like, Lisa can't help you, really. Because Lisa's like your only ally, for real, for real. And Lisa doesn't, she doesn't argue well. <laughs> like, she's not a good arguer. But both Alexia and um, Gertie, they are. <laughs> and, I mean, Kiki's kind of right there, too. And, you know, Marisol's right there, too. So, essentially, that's technically, like, four against... You two, maybe? I would. That don't look good on you, Larsa. I'm just, I'm just saying. But also, too, I, I kind of get why Alexia would be on Gertie's side. For one, Alexia is the one who brought Gertie onto the show. They're already friends. Number one. Number two, um, one thing we know about Alexia is she don't play with health. Like you know, especially since everything that happened to Frankie. Anytime anyone or anybody has health problems, she doesn't play with that. She she's very much like we we need to take that seriously. Whatever else you got going on goes in the back burner. That is clearly part of like Alexia's values as a whole. Like she doesn't play when it comes about people's health and stuff. So when Gertie was having her issue, she was like, oh no, 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 no. I got her back because like that's something very, very serious. That's life and death. And same thing with, um, you know, Marisol. Marisol had her back kind of from the jump once they found out that she had, you know, cancer. So it's like, mm -mm. but anyway, so they're continuing to go back and forth while all this is happening. And then Adriana is chiming in unnecessarily just coming in there too. So I, I forgot Adriana is going to chime in if it's, um, Alexia or Marisol. Um, but it's to the point where everyone's annoyed. And then Julia states to Kiki, maybe we start kissing, they will stop <laughs> talking. They will stop this. And so they start kissing. They just start making out right there while all this is happening. I mean, they're not like making out, but they're just like doing these kisses because they want to mess up their makeup. And um, Andy does notice that they're kissing. And then just also I know where he's like, why are you two kissing? <laughs> And then Marisol, which I cackled. I've, I've rewatched this part five times. <laughs> She's like, that's hot. <laughs> and they state that um, they just want people to stop talking over each other. Uh, and so they did that for that for that to happen. And it worked. So, I mean, hey, do what you got to do, right? But anyway. 
Rudy then chimes in and states that they need to stop pretending everyone's telling the truth about things. And Larsa is the biggest part, pot star of this group. And it's not being called out. And then she also then mentions the threats that Larsa does um, behind the scenes. So we actually find out what the real tea is and what's really going on. So apparently Larsa, whenever people come at her too much or they try to come at her, she threatens to expose them on the, into the press. And the thing is, we've seen this every season. She's kind of actually done that where she's like, she'll make up an outlandish story and try to like, um, expose it. So, I mean, it doesn't seem unbelievable to me. Um, and then Dr. Nicole actually proceeds to clarify uh, what they're talking about because there actually is one particular event that they're talking about. And um, Alexia also chimes in like, yeah, there was something that happened behind the scenes. So we find out, so this is before season five's filming, when Alexia um, wedding took place, um, there was, Larsa claimed that she saw some of the ladies doing drugs, basically. Um, probably the, um, probably snow. <laughs> probably snow. <laughs> and, um, cause they're in Miami. So, I mean, let's be real here. And, yeah. Anyway, and so then they actually go back to the beginning of season five when Lisa and Larsa are arguing back and forth because remember at the beginning of the season before everything went down with Lisa and um, Lenny Larsa and Lisa did not see it for each other and they were going all the way off so it alludes that one of the ladies that they're talking about was Lisa and Lisa is not helping the case out at all. Allegedly, 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 allegedly. I don't want any problems. I'm going to keep saying allegedly. So Lisa, the whole entire time while they're doing, having this discussion of everything that happened, like, you know, kind of clarifying that Larsa basically threatened to like expose this and put it to the press. Um, around by way of saying it, um, but that actually adds more clarity of why Larsa and Lisa were arguing so heavy because they kept talking about um, lifestyle and it seemed like such a stupid argument, which honestly, though, I wouldn't be surprised if the argument really was that because Lisa is that dense for them to have that kind of argument. But for the vitriol, the argument they were having, it seemed ridiculous. So I think what really what they're arguing about was that allegation. I think Larsa might have been trying to hold that over her head. That maybe she was one of the ladies. And the whole entire time while they're um, having this conversation, this is at the reunion. Um, Lisa's like, why? Like, it's Miami, though. Like, she's not helping her case. She is making it seem like <laughs> she than the one because everyone else is just like keep either they're, they're either keeping quiet and dr nicole right away was like look i took a drug test immediately when that all came out because i don't want to because you know dr nicole is a doctor she can't have that kind of like thing on her jacket because no matter how frequent you hear people doing that kind of a drug or drugs it's still illegal <laughs> okay there's still ramifications no matter how common it is and what circle you in it's very illegal and clearly where they're at they're with a lot of people who have money and it is kind of a common thing and i hate to say this even around here in chicago it is common so common and i'm just like wow <laughs> i Dare didn't work for you, lot y'all did it. <laughs> Dare worked for me, but maybe it didn't for you. Well, anyway, yeah, it, it did for the most part. I, I found my way. We'll just say that. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, my feedback with this is Lisa's really dumb because I just wish she would. It seems like she just doesn't know how to watch what she's saying. It's because she still is in the middle of this divorce, by the way. 
Um, and we'll find out part two. Because I did see a little previews of part two. She's still in the middle of this divorce. Like the divorce isn't finalized yet. And so if you're with someone who's that diabolical as a Lenny, I would like mind your P's and Q's and not, you know, say stuff like that. Or even entertain the idea that you could be part of that. Anyway. So lastly, it does end where they all get, you know, released to lunch. Larsa, Marcus, and Lisa are all in the dressing room. Larsa's heated because she's like, I just got accused of doing something really, really messed up and got exposed. And the thing is, I believe it, though. But because um, now I think about it and just remind me. I could have sworn that was how and why the Kardashians and Larsa broke up. It was something related to Larsa wanting to like, she was so thirsty that she was exposing certain things out into the press that even the Kardashians weren't okay with. I could have swore that was part of the issue that happened there. Um, so what they're saying that Larsa is doing, I'm not that surprised. It sounds pretty accurate. It seems like that would be something she would do. But anyway, um, Marisol is getting more information from Alexia, what took place because Marisol apparently didn't know about all this. And, um, Alexi was like, yeah, that's why I kept asking, did you go to the restroom? She's like, yeah, for how much I'm in the restroom, I would have saw if something like this was happening. And, um, and then basically, um, Gertie is talking about it. And she literally is on a mission. She's like, I'm so sick of Larsa just being, just flying under the radar for all the BS that she does. She drops bombs, hides her hand. And she's like, but it's not happening anymore. I, I got time today. That's pretty much where she's at. I got time today. And Kiki's like, I got you. I, I, I saw the silent, like, okay, this, we, we got this. Um, Cause they're in their dressing room talking about it. And then um, Alexia does go to um, Larsa's dressing room and says hi to Marcus, which is really awkward because Marcus this whole entire time is like, Oh my gosh, it made me so mad. Da, 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 da. And it's just like. I hope come next season, I don't want to see Marcus anymore. I don't. He's so clout chasey. It's giving cringe. The whole thing is cringe. It just is. But anyway. So, and this is, but by the way, this is where the mess continues though. Because then the episode ends where. We saw previews of this where Larsa and Alexia are going at it. And Larsa calls Alexia a liar. Alexia is like, what I lie about? And I mean, she didn't really have any evidence about Alexia lying. But the thing that's wild about when people say someone's a liar, no one tells the truth. Everyone lies. I mean, unless you're like a robot, you don't, no one ever completely tells the truth about things. But anyway, so it ends with that and Lisa's trying to break them up. But yeah, that part one was good. I enjoyed it. I can't wait to see part two and three because I, I, all I want, I want Kiki to get somebody together and by somebody, Lisa, because Lisa, sit back. It's not your turn yet, but it will be soon. I think she knows that, though. That's why she's been trying to, like, be quiet. Um, I hope she knows that. I don't know. Lisa just, she's a character. I just be wondering, like, man, you're very... She seems very dense. <laughs> but anyway, that does conclude um, the reunion part one. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.